Good morning, New Beginnings. It's me, Pastor Danish House. Today is Thursday, December 31st, 2020. It's New Year's Eve. This is the last day of 2020. Rejoice. <laughs> Thank you for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I'm glad you decided to join me for this today and make me part of your life. And I'm delighted that you're part of my life as well. Well, yeah, so tonight is New Year's Eve. There's not going to be any uh, youth group meeting tonight uh, at 6.30, so no youth group tonight. Uh, have a great time with your families. Uh, enjoy the New Year's Eve holiday. I suspect my family will be having some sort of movie marathon. I'm not sure what sort of it's going to be. Uh, this week, I am doing the daily devotionals uh, as a warning. Uh, again, that's something I don't do very often. Um, but, uh, but warning is part of my job as a pastor. I'm here to teach you from the scriptures, to give you good godly counsel, and part of that is, is giving warnings. And I'm warning you this week about the Passion Translation. Uh, the Passion Translation is a, a translation, I'm going to say in quotes, translation of the Bible uh, that was made by one man, a pastor from Connecticut named uh, Brian Simmons, and uh, he's translated the Bible, and uh, part of his motivation for translating the Bible uh, was to uh, provide just a Bible that's more has more zest and more vigor and more vim than the than the the normal Bible. So there's a lot more adjectives in it and a lot more, you know, uh, passionate descriptors in it, um, things that aren't in the original text. But he's decided to add them in to kind of spice it up. He feels that. Um, that he believes that Jesus appeared to him and uh, touched him and told him that he, he would uh, receive downloads of secrets that nobody else has ever known that will enable him to translate uh, the scriptures in a different way in and in a, in a different sort of approach to the scriptures than has ever been done before using what he calls the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic texts. Um, and uh, I've been sharing some of the, the bits from the Passion Translation this week. I want you to know I'm, I'm going to be doing four of these. I'm not even going to come close to scratching the surface uh, of, of how bad I believe this translation is. I believe it is more harmful to use this translation than to not read the Bible at all. Uh, that's how bad it is. I think it is misrepresenting the message of Scripture. So I'm warning folks not to use this Bible translation. Don't give it as a gift. Uh, I don't even recommend using it alongside your other Bible translation. I believe that it's a bad, it's a bad piece of work. And uh, I, I think the guy who translated it, Pastor Simmons, uh, has good intentions. I agree with him in some of the aims that he has. Uh, but he's putting his own spin on Scripture and saying that it's Jesus' spin on Scripture. And I think that is a bridge too far. I think it's dangerous. Uh, and I want to urge you not to use this translation. The, I, on on uh, Tuesday, I said that, uh, that I, the first um, passage that came to my mind uh, was Matthew 5, verse 4. That was uh, recently, very recently, as I was engaging with a friend, uh, I, I, I re-encountered the Passion Translation uh, in Matthew 5, verse 4. That was very recently. But over a year ago, when I was uh, preparing to preach on the Song of Solomon, was when I received my first copy of the Passion Translation in the mail. That was destroyed in our fire. Um, and I was beginning to uh, prepare for the Song of Solomon uh, series, uh, a sermon series that I preached. And so the first actual startling moment that I've ever had with the Passion Translation was in studying for that first sermon in the Song of Solomon series. And uh, here's, here's what the second verse of Song of Solomon says in the English Standard Version and in the Passion Translation. In the English Standard Version, which is the version I typically preach out of, and frankly, it's very similar in all the other translations of the Bible, says this, Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for your love is better than wine. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for your love is better than wine. This is, uh, if, you, if you remember from my Song of Solomon series, uh, the Song of Solomon is written basically as a dialogue between two lovers, a woman and a man. And this is the woman uh, looking forward to getting kisses from her, uh, from her 
uh, lover who she sees as being uh, like a king uh, in her life, um, although he's just a simple shepherd. Um, so she says, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for your love is better than wine. Uh, now, throughout the centuries, the Song of Solomon has been interpreted in a lot of different ways. Uh, it's been, it's inter been interpreted as, as love poetry be between human beings that is inspired by God. It's been interpreted as uh, um, sort of a, a, a spiritual love between God and humanity. Uh, it's been interpreted as being a, a love story between Jesus and the church. Those are all different ways that have been, it's been translated and there's many more. Um, and part of the reason it's been, trans it's been interpreted in different ways is that it's, it's, it can be sort of ambiguous about who is saying what, when, and to whom. Um, the Song of Solomon is not explicit about who is, who is the speaker at any given point, and it's, it's easy to allegorize it and to spiritualize it and to make it, uh, to interpret it in different ways. That's actually, I think, a feature of the Song of Solomon. I don't think that's a flaw. Um, it's written in such a way that it could be interpreted as a letter from God uh, to his church, and it could be interpreted as a letter, as a story between human lovers. Uh, each of them is a, a perfectly legitimate translation uh, interpretation, and each of those are, are worth uh, pursuing. But when Brian Simmons translates it, he eliminates that entirely. He eliminates the ambiguity. Um, he's decided that it's a love story between God and the, ch and the church and nothing else. So the way he translates it, reflects that. And here's what he says. Here's, here it is in the Passion Translation. Let him smother me with kisses, his spirit kiss divine. So kind are your caresses, I drink them in like the sweetest wine. Let him smother me with kisses, his spirit kiss divine. So kind are your caresses, I drink them in like the sweetest wine. So here Simmons adds the idea that, it's, there's, that the kiss that she's looking for is a spirit kiss. Spirit hyphen kiss is how he translates it. Um, actually translated the wrong word there because there is no word in the Greek or in the Hebrew that reflects that. This is just something that he added in on his own. Um, it's not he's not taking the Hebrew and translating it differently than uh, in uh, the English Standard Version. What he's doing is adding his own words in there that he feels helps to clarify that this is actually uh, the Holy Spirit who is kissing. Uh, the church, and uh, that's, that's why he says his spirit kiss divine. Um, why is this a problem? Well, it's, it's a problem. I mean, isn't isn't this a legitimate interpretation of the passage? Sure, it is a legitimate interpretation of the passage, but it's not the passage, right? There's a difference between an interpretation of the passage and the passage. Uh, the passage itself is what God said. The interpretation is how we sort of take that and, and, and apply it to our lives. Um, and Brian Simmons has done that work for you. And, and it, you can only get his interpretation if you use that passage. You don't have the opportunity to wrestle with it yourself uh, because he's sort of uh, clarified that it's, the, that it's the Holy Spirit who wants to kiss you and not that, uh, that uh, this is a love story between a man and a woman. Um, it's a problem when you add to scripture. I just want to say this again. It's a problem when you add to scripture because you're putting your own thoughts in there and saying, my thoughts are the equivalent of God's thoughts. The thoughts that I have on this are uh, somehow uh, are authoritative is what, is what he's doing by putting them in there. Um, another problem, and I mentioned this earlier in a different passage, but if you wanted to do a, a Bible study on the Holy Spirit, for example, and so you did a search through the Passion Translation of all the texts that reference the Spirit, this passage would come up. And the Holy Spirit is not really mentioned in this passage in the original manuscript. So you would this, this passage would come up and you would think that it had something to do with the Holy Spirit even though in reality it doesn't. This is adding to scripture, it's a no-no. Uh, we believe that the words of scripture are inspired by God, are authoritative. We don't believe that you can just add your own words in there. Um, so this is a problem, and this is the sort of problem that happens all throughout the Passion Translation. 
Um, the Song of Songs is was the first place I encountered it. But I, I, obviously on Tuesday I talked about Matthew 5.4, which just horrifies me. That he would, uh, the things that he adds and the things that he takes away. Um, also Galatians 1.8 I talked about yesterday. Anyway, uh, we need to treat scripture with much more respect than the Passion Translation does. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you that, for thank you for 2020 here on New Year's Eve. Thank you for this year, Lord. It's been a rough year, and we don't we're not really thrilled with all the things that have happened, but we're thrilled with living this year with you. And I, I pray that you would uh, help us, Lord, to accept everything from your hand, uh, the tough times as well as the, the the wonderful times. But Lord, I do pray for a better 2021. I pray for a happier, uh, less stressful 2021 for folks. I pray that you would uh, bring us into this year uh, hand in hand with you. Lord, we love you and we trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thanks for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I love you, New Beginnings. I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow.